Dr. Vinay Prasad here from the University of California, San Francisco. I'm talking about a new paper. It came out in Nature Medicine a while back. It's about artificial intelligence and knee radiographs. I find it super interesting. This is gonna be a little bit different than the other videos on this channel. I'm not going to make a forceful and brisk argument. This is gonna be more contemplative. It's gonna be more ruminating about this study, which is super interesting. There is one point I wanna make at the end, which I think is a, a severe point, um, but I wanna walk through what the authors did here, why they did it, what they found, and why it's so interesting. So first of all, I have to say hats off to the authors here. I really like this paper because it got me thinking a lot. It got me thinking a lot about the topic. It got me thinking a lot in general. And I appreciate people in science who can do work in science that gets you, gets your noodle going, gets you thinking. And I think this paper is in line with the best of science. It gets that going. So what is this paper? An algorithmic approach to reducing unexplained pain disparities in underserved populations. What are they talking about here? Well, they have a data set. It's got thousands of radiographs in there of the knee. And we also know that people have some subjective perception of knee pain. And there's the knee pain and the radiograph. And there are a number of metrics that already exist that are used that attempt to score knee pain based on radiographic abnormalities. Now, of course, all of the radiographic abnormalities of a knee and the pain, they one doesn't explain the other fully. In fact, the radiographic abnormalities explain very little of the cumulative knee pain or the difference in knee pain, the variance in knee pain that people experience. And so these authors were wondering, what if we used AI, trained it, machine learning, trained it on the radiographs, it's going to try to predict pain, but it's not gonna look at all the things we've conventionally looked at. In fact, it's a black box. We don't know what it looks, like, looks at, but hopefully it'll predict AI, will predict the pain better than the conventional method of predicting knee pain from, uh, from films. So I think it's kind of a clever idea. The other thing the authors note is that there is a racial gap and a socioeconomic gap, but the racial gap is that black patients experience more knee pain um, than white patients. And if you use the current radiographic scores, you don't fully explain the difference in knee pain. You explain some of it because they have worse scores on the radiograph, um, but it doesn't fully account for the difference in pain they experience. One hypothesis is that the current radiographic scoring system was predominantly developed on white people, and it may lack relevance in a diverse population. And so we may literally not be looking at the right things and not have invested energy in figuring out the right, right way to predict pain from radiographic features. The other thing the authors talk about, I think, initially, is that there's a component of knee pain that's outside of the knee. It has to do with all of the very complex things that go on in all of our lives that affect how we feel and whether or not we have knee pain. And so what they're doing here by training AI on the films is they're trying to say, what's the most information you can get from the radiograph? And maybe there is this other component of knee pain that we're not able to capture, but maybe the current scales of knee pain don't fully capture the damage, the pathology that's going on inside the knee. So I hope that's a fair summary of what they set out to do. And I think it's quite interesting uh, on the face of it, it's, it's a very interesting question. Here's what they found. They developed this algorithm, the ALGP, that's their artificial learning algorithm, and the R-squared value was 0.16, but it was only 0.1 with that traditional measure of knee pain, uh, the traditional scoring system for knee radiographs, point, which was 0.1. First thing to say here is this, this is very little R squared. I mean, most of the pain and the variation in pain people experience is not explained by anything on the radiograph, either if you use AI or if you use the old fashioned system. But the one thing that is worth saying here is that they're 60% better. You know, they are a lot better. That's a lot better. I mean, I'll concede that to them. They're doing a lot better at predicting the pain using their algorithm than the traditional method. And they show in a number of ways that, um, that is even better in, 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 in racially diverse populations. What else do I want to say here? We found that the disparities in osteoarthritis pain can be better accounted for by differences in this new measure of radiographic disease severity relative to the standard measure, the KLG. As shown in table two, ALGP accounts for 43% of the racial pain disparity, 4.7 times more than KLG did. It also accounted for two times more of the disparity by income, 3.6 times more of the disparity by education. Um, this is interesting. So I guess what they're suggesting is, look, when you develop that initial KLG system, which I believe was developed in the United Kingdom, they allude to, it's mostly on white people, and you have learned the radiographic predictors of pain in a white population, but this does not readily extrapolate to other races. And we're showing you here when we have a sort of racially diverse, at least more diverse than England at the time, uh, uh, population, we can have a better prediction of pain. Um, the first question. 
is it reconstructing race or socioeconomic status? This was my first question, which was, and I'll give you a little analogy before I delve into this. Um, I heard from someone that they once trained AI on slides in the hematology office. And some of the slides were pathology, Castleman's, Hodgkin's, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And some of the slides were normal tissue. And they trained AI to look at these slides and say, is this abnormal or normal? And it got really good at predicting what was abnormal. And then later it was revealed the thing that it was using to predict abnormal from normal wasn't any histopathology, but rather dust on the cover slip because these slides were stored in the office students would always look at the slides of the pathology and they wouldn't look at all the normal slides and those normal slides would collect dust. So if you had dust on it, it was more likely to be normal than abnormal. And that was what I was predicting. There's always that risk with AI. It's finding something that you don't know what it's finding. And what it's finding isn't exactly knee pathology, i.e. the knee grinding down and causing you pain, but something on the radiograph that's tipping it off as to the person's race or their socioeconomic status. And so my first question for these authors would be, how do you know your algorithm isn't actually just learning race and having known race, it's using race as a factor to predict pain because we know African-Americans are having more pain in this data set than white people. So it could be learning it that way. And they actually thought about that to their credit. And they, they did one sensitivity analysis to try to correct for that, which is the following. In a regression with pain score as a dependent variable, the coefficient of ALGP was 0.94 without controlling for binary race or socioeconomic variables, and 0.83 when controlling for all th three binary race or socioeconomic variables. Thus, the coefficient remained highly statistically significant and similar magnitude, blah, 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 blah. They're saying that even if you adjust for black or non-black, higher or lower income or higher or lower education, this ALGP is still better at predicting pain, suggesting that it's not relearning these factors. In fact, because we're putting them in as other variables in the model, it is actually learning pain based on radiographs in a way that we have hitherto not learned it, that radiologists have not appreciated. This is interesting to me. But one thing I do note is the coefficient has gotten smaller, hasn't it? 0.94 to 0.83. So some of ALGP is through these mechanisms, I suspect. Now, the confidence intervals are wide here. You need a mega data set to prove that this is statistically significant, this difference, but it has to be considered that this is hinting at that at least some of the predictive power of the AI algorithm is through these variables. The next thing I will say is they are still binning these variables, education and income into a binary classification. Now, that's not the same amount of information as if you had a true continuous variable. Um, I wonder if you put in really continuous variables, if the ALGP coefficient will drop even more from 0.83 to 0.7 or 0.6, suggesting that ALGP is learning socioeconomics just within the bin. It's learning something about whether you make 51,000 or 120,000 or 190,000 or 250,000. I think that's possible. To me, in my mind, the way to really lay this to rest would be the following experiment if you were to take 10,000 radiographs of 25-year-old people or 30-year-old people who you know, don't have knee pain, they're just coming into the office, they had a radiograph for some other purpose um, or suspected fracture or something like that, um, uh, and they had, a, they had leg films and you just crop out the, the knee part of it, um, and you, and, but these are people not, who, are, who are not seeking knee pain. They're not coming in for knee pain. You took these films and you asked if the ALG, if this algorithm can predict their race or their socioeconomic status, make race, socioeconomic status, or education the variable you seek to predict, make that the dependent variable, and ask if the algorithm can predict that. And if you show me it has zero predictive power for race or socioeconomic status, then I'm resting assured that the algorithm is not learning or AI is not capable of learning or extrapolating race and socioeconomic status from some artifact on the film, an artifact I can't even imagine. And, and of course I can't imagine it because AI can find all sorts of things you don't, you, you couldn't even think about like the dust on the cover slip. You know, I wouldn't have even thought about that, right? Um, so I think that to me, that kind of robustness check would really persuade me that it is not learning this. Um, or the other thought I had would be to make these sort of continuous variables really get a sense of their income and net worth in a really continuous way and prove to me that that coefficient is not dipping to 0.6 or 0.7. Okay, now here's where they get, and this is the part that I think is super interesting. In addition to raising important questions regarding how we understand potential sources of pain, our results have implications for determination of who receives knee arthroplasty for knee pain. While radiographic severity is not part of the formal guidelines, 
it does, to some degree, people with higher KLG scores are more likely to receive surgery. And ALGP identifies a subgroup of patients who have severe knee pain based on radiographic appearance of the knee. However, this appearance is not consistent with severe osteoarthritis as defined by the traditional systems. So it's possible that these people would benefit from us from arthroplasty, but because the radiographic severity is not that bad, they are preferentially given physical therapy, opioids, those sorts of things. And that might not be good for them. Um, so to kind of prove this, um, they asked, which knees would potentially be eligible for surgery using the old scoring system and using the new scoring system. And what they show is that there's going to be an increase in black patients who are eligible for surgery, lower income patients and lower education patients. So this is quite provocative. And this is, I think, the most interesting part. This is the most interesting part. This is the part I want to sink my teeth into. I think the authors have done a, a very good job throughout this paper. They have piqued my interest in a way it hasn't been piqued in a long time. And they've got me thinking in ways I haven't thought in a long time. This is the part where I come a little bit off board. And I think that they're kind of missing it, what they need to be predicting. See, we don't want AI to predict how much of the pain is attributable to pathology in a knee radiograph. That's not what we want AI to predict when we're thinking about who to take to surgery. We want AI to predict which people we take to surgery are going to get the biggest benefit from surgery. It's the delta surgery we want to predict. In other words, how much will the pain fall from having surgery? You could have somebody with a baseline pain score of eight and a person with a baseline pain score of six. And if the person with a baseline pain score of six will, will go from six to one and eight will just go from eight to six, the person to take to surgery is actually the six. It doesn't matter what your baseline pain is. It's what's the delta pain reduction or the delta improvement in functional status, which is probably the bigger reason why people get arthroplastic knee surgery isn't just the pain, it's of course, improvement in functional status. And the counterfactuals, of course, these patients are getting aggressive physical therapy and all those other things we do. And so what I think this paper is mistaken in the sense that it's doing is it's training AI to recognize radiographic abnormalities, some of which may be unmasking these factors, but probably mostly not unmasking these factors, good for them to look into that, um, that predict pain. But Pain is not the thing that surgery prompts, that prompts surgery. The thing that prompts surgery is relief of pain, which is a different variable than the baseline pain. Baseline pain that doesn't get better with surgery, that's what no orthopod wants to take to the OR. And sadly, that's a lot of patients they take to the OR. Baseline pain that gets a lot better from surgery, that's the patient the doctor wants to take the OR. So I think because they obviously, they don't have that. They don't have the delta pain based on surgery. Of course, you would need an entirely different data set. Possibly that data set is a very difficult data set to get or doesn't even exist or it'd have to be constructed or have to be in the, in, 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 in as part of a prospective study. But it's the delta, it's the absolute risk reduction in pain that you want to train your AI on. You want to take people to the OR who are going to drive the most benefit, not necessarily people who have the most baseline pain explicable by radiographic factors. Now that's a pathophysiologic story that may make you feel good at night, but that's not how pain works in the body. And that's not how these surgeries work. And there's a lot of complexity to pain and the surgery that are beyond the scope as we've already seen. So that I think is the most interesting point. Very interesting paper. I mean, it's a very interesting paper. It, it does persuade me that this scoring system for knee osteoarthritis developed in, I don't know, 19 diggity two based on white people in the UK is probably not the best radiographic scoring system for a diverse population of people. And that if you use their AI, their AI can look at things that we may not appreciate or never even thought of to look at or measure. And by that, actually, it's predicting a higher proportion of the knee pain. But it's also worth reminding ourselves that the R squared is 0.16. It was 0.1, which is terrible. Now it's 0.16, which is still super low. That's 60% better, but it's still most of the variation in knee pain, 84% is unexplained by any radiographic abnormality, suggesting that pain is a very complex emotion, complex feeling, and it's driven by so many things in our lives. Um, and the final point is that I'm not persuaded that we will make better operative decisions by using their score instead of the traditional score, because I think we're not getting at the, the thing that we're trying to optimize, which is the reduction in pain, not necessarily the percent of pain explicable by radiographic abnormalities, which may not have anything to do with reduction in pain. And ironically, you might be taking the wrong or different patients, different African-American patients, different white patients to the OR, people who are actually gonna drive less benefit by using their system than in the old way. It could actually make things worse, right? If you don't train on the right thing, the thing you're trying to optimize, you could actually make things worse. I think that's an important point that we forget. So. 
why did I do this paper? I'm very interested in AI and cancer screening and things like that. And I think this really kind of pushes these thinking um, in, in albeit a space that I'm not that interested in. But full disclosure, we do have a paper that we are submitting on knee arthroplasty. And I did in the last few years shadow an orthopod doing several of these surgeries because it did pique my interest. And so I will have something in this space soon, but it won't be exactly related to what they're doing. On that positive note, we'll be back with our more typical video next time, but this was more of a contemplative video walking you through this paper. And again, I want to say congratulations to the authors. You kept me interested. And I would say that is a high bar in this world of biomedical research where I am so easily bored. So thank you.